Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, Facebook Live Tuesday. I'm Eileen Gottlieb, affectionately known as the Heart Healer. And we gather here a couple times a month from the Sharing the Love with Young Living Essential Oils Facebook group. Um, we've been alternating and testing this out where we're gathering in the morning one uh, time and this time we're gathering in the evening to accommodate um, the different time zones um, that different people are living in so that we can offer the greatest opportunity for people to attend live. So I have a lot of information I want to share with you tonight. So I wrote notes. All right, so if you see me moving things around or looking a little to the side, it's because I really want to um, cover a couple of things and I want to remember the details of them. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about creating a toxin-free home or office environment. And for many people, their home is their office environment, so they're one and the same. And the reason why this is so important to me, and this is actually how I entered into Young Living Essential Oils, the company, and started using their products, because I wanted to detox my living environment. I had a real shift of consciousness and didn't want to use toxic uh, household cleaners anymore, etc. And so one by one, I slowly got rid of all of these things. And the reason why it's so important is because anything that we expose ourselves to that has a toxic nature to it, what happens is it affects our immune system. And anything that affects our immune system affects our health and wellness overall, correct, right? I'm sure that you'll agree with that. And so it's, it's an integral part of creating a healthy lifestyle for both ourselves, our children, as well as our animals. So, you know, our pets are just as sensitive to toxins as we are. So it's really important that we make these choices consciously, right? So tonight we're gonna to talk about a little bit of an introduction to essential oils for those of you that are new to them and are not real familiar with them. We're not gonna go into, um, uh, what is it called, um, organic chemistry or anything like that. Just basics, right? And then we're gonna talk about some of the products that are in your home or office space that, that are toxic in nature. And we're gonna talk about some healthy alternatives to that, which happen to be um, some of the Young Living essential oils and some of their essential oil infused products, okay? And we're gonna share some do-it-yourself recipes too. And so I also want to always um, remind everyone that none of the information that's shared in these Facebook Lives or in any of the workshops that I present that have to do with essential oils or holistic care are intended to diagnose or treat, nor are they a replacement for your chosen path of medical care. Making choices about one's health care is very personal. Making conscious choices, I believe, is the greatest gift that we give ourselves. So what are essential oils? Essential oils are man's first medicine. That's kind of how the, I like to think of them. I think that probably herbs, parts of the plants, were really our first because before we learned how to diffuse, not diffuse, di um, distill the actual essential oil from the plants, we use different herbs as poultices, as, um, as teas, as different types of um, applications to receive the wellness benefits of them. The essential oils are the lifeblood of a plant. And they behave in the human body similarly to how they behave in the plant. So. Just like our, our blood um, 
offers nutrients and a means for toxins to be moved through the body and into different organ systems so that they can be released from the body. So the essential oil in a plant works similarly by bringing nutrients in and protecting the plant from anything that might be harmful to it. So when we inhale, when we apply topically, when we ingest, essential oils, they find their way to their most familiar home, which is our bloodstream, because it has the most similar molecular structure. So what do essential oils do? They cleanse, they oxygenate, they protect, they nourish, they heal, and they're vital for a plant to grow, live, and evolve and adapt to its surroundings. So there are some essential oils that help us adapt, like lavender is one of the most amazing adaptogens, and it helps us to adapt on a cellular level as well as on an emotional level. So there's a lot of interesting um, ways that we can utilize essential oils to support, support ourselves in our overall health and wellness, okay? All right, so if anyone is here joining me, please do let me know, okay? All right, so where do essential oils come from? They come from all different parts of a plant. They can come from a shrub, they can come from the leaf, the twigs, the roots, the flowers, they can come from the seeds, let's see, the fruit rinds, bushes, roots, trees, flowers, shrubs. And some examples of these are for shrubs would be the essential oil thyme. Frankincense is a great example of it from the tree, although frankincense is not a true essential oil. It's actually um, an oil distilled from the resin that comes from behind the bark of the frankincense tree. Rose oil comes from the flower, and that's a bush. Geranium comes from the leaves. Lavender comes from the flowers, as does rose oil. Ginger comes from the root. Cumin is an example of an oil that comes from the seeds. And lemon or orange in most of our citruses, um, lime, tangerine, they all come from the rind of those fruits. And what you'll find is that if you've ever wondered why some essential oils are much more expensive than others, it has to do with how much plant material is needed to glean the, the essential oil from that plant. So for example, to, to glean rose oil, it takes tons of rose petals. So rose, rose oil is very expensive. It's very dear, as we say. But I always believe, and when, if you've ever visited uh, this page before or read any of my posts or been on any of my other um, uh, Facebook Lives or essential oil classes, I always teach less is more. So some essential oils may be much more expensive, but less is more. One drop, two drops, but repeated application is necessary because essential oils are volatile. And what that means is that they evaporate at very low temperatures. We don't heat essential oils. You know how we used to put them in a little glass dish with some water and put a tea light candle underneath them and those were really pretty? I had them. But what they do is when you heat an oil, it changes the chemical constituency of it. If you change the chemical constituency, then you change the therapeutic benefit. So we no longer do that. We have diffusers that they're changing over time. They're getting more and more interesting and more and more therapeutic. So the ones that I like are the ultrasonic mist diffusers. So what you're getting is microfine droplets of essential oil with water in the air. And it's, it's a great delivery system for when you want to diffuse. Some of the older versions, and there are some essential oil diffusers that still use this where you just put the plain drops of oil in the uh, reservoir. And what 
you do is when you turn it on, it will put out a microfine mist of the essential oils. No water involved. I like especially, even though we live in, I live in South Florida where most of the year it's very humid here, we live in air conditioning, at least I do. And so I like having that moisture in the air. And for those of you that live in arid climates or that are in winter time, you know, where it can be very dry when you've got your heat on or it's just dry in general because it's winter, Having a diffuser with it that's an ultrasonic mist diffuser is really a wonderful choice. Welcome, Angela. I am well and blessings. Grateful that you joined us tonight. All right. So we're doing a little bit of a history of essential oils. Um, the first culture to actually diffuse essential or distill essential oils were the Egyptians. And this would be the ancient Egyptians around 2800 BC. And priests and priestesses were the physicians um, and dispensers of oils for healing purposes. And I remember hearing a wonderful story about, and this is where our feelings oils come from, from the feelings kit, where um, in that culture, emotions were considered evil deities. And so essential oils were used, they had different cleansing processes to cleanse the evil deities, which is to get rid of our emotions. And so the feelings kit oils that we have today, we have a, 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 a kit of six blends of essential oils, and those are, they're wonderful. And when you use essential oils for the emotions, we can use them either to um, bring in a certain feeling or to clear a certain feeling. And we'll talk about that on one of our other Facebook Lives. So essential oils during ancient Egyptian times were also used for embalming, for mummifying bodies. Um, and I remember um, I actually visited the uh, King Tut exhibit in the Cairo Museum uh, in Egypt. And there, there were alabaster jars from King Tut's tomb that were Held, that held essential oils and that there was residual of oils still in the alabaster jars. It's, it's amazing. So when you think about how expensive some of the oils are, like sacred frankincense, like rose oil, keep in mind they last a very long time because King Tut died a few thousand years ago. <laughs> All right. And essential oils, um, they were the gifts given to the Christ child, uh, frankincense, myrrh, and sandalwood. Sandalwood was actually the gold, right? Thank you for the love. All right. So, and some of the things that I wanted to share with you about essential oils are that 97% of the world's essential oils are adulterated. Um, and that adulteration can happen anywhere from the seed to the soil to pesticides being used to the source of water to the distillation process. There are so many different steps involved, and that's why with Young Living, um, with the Young Living Company, our seed to seal process is so what our reputation is based upon. We also, because there are no standards for essential oils in the United States, we do um, our testing of our essential oils based upon European standards. And what that means is that every batch of essential oil that is distilled is tested for its chemical constituency. And if there is anything in there that does not belong in there, intentional or accidental because we live in a bit of a toxic soup in this planet so it may not be intentional that something is is has a toxin in it but be that as it may if a toxin is noted if anything adulterated is in it we do not use it in in our single oils in our blends or in any of our essential oil infused products and that brings a lot of peace of mind to my heart. And that's why I have stayed in this company for 20 years, because I really trust the quality of these, of these oils and oil-infused products. Okay, so 5,000 pounds of rose petals for one pound of oil. That's why it's so expensive. All right, and there are different ways of applying the oils. 
um, Europe is much more adult than we are. We're really quite children here in the United States when it comes to aromatherapy. In, in France, uh, for example, um, essential oils have been used since World War I, actually. And in the 1960s, there was kind of a resurgence of, of essential oils. And in France, there, it, there was at one time, I think up until, yes, up until 1990, they actually um, had their essential oil prescriptions that were written by uh, physicians that were actually paid for by their, um, their health system. It stopped in 1990, but they still have their pharmacies for essential oils. So most of the uh, route of entry for applying essential oils in France is the oral route, taking them by mouth. In England, the primary route is topically by massage with a carrier oil. And in Germany, these are the three primary countries in Europe that have really embraced essential oil usage. In Germany, they primarily use inhalations, which would be in diffusers. And as I mentioned before, because we're babies, relatively, in the United States, um, we actually um, use all three application routes. So let's get to our topic for tonight. How to incorporate essential oils into your home and office to create a toxin-free environment. Well, let's start by what products in your home can be toxic. So you want to take a look at your cleaning products, your laundry detergent, the dish soap that you use for hand washing, um, hand, wash, hand washing your dishes, or your dishwasher detergent, um, your hand soaps insect repellents, room deodorizers, underarm deodorant, hair care products, skin care products, carpet fresheners, etc. So when you think about it, anything that we breathe, we put on our skin, or we ingest, meaning in our food, has potential toxins in it. Even organic produce, because it is grown in a toxic soup of a planet, can have toxins on it. So washing our fruits and vegetables is very important. And remember, the core reason for doing this is to support a healthy immune system. So what are some healthy alternatives, okay? So for cleaning products, my favorites. You're getting my list of my favorites. The Thieves Household Cleaner is one of my absolute favorites. Um, it comes very concentrated in a small, um, I think it's 32 ounce uh, jar or a 60, 68 or 64 ounce container. I buy the large container and that lasts me probably a good six months or more. So when you look at the, the price and the quality, um, the value there, it's, it's very good. Um, it comes very concentrated, so for example, one teaspoon of the Thieves Cleaner in eight ounces of water, and you put it in a glass spray bottle because uh, essential oils tend to eat plastic, um, and so they'll leach into the cleaning solution. And um, so when you use, whenever you mix do-it-yourself do it products, you want to use either really heavy-duty plastic that's healthy or you want to use glass um, because that's usually the best, um, uh, the best uh, container for it. So Thieves Household Cleaner, and you can use that pretty much on any surface. I use it on my countertops in my kitchen. I'm looking because I'm sitting in my healing space in my living dining area. So my kitchen is right here. So it's funny how we do that when we're thinking about things, we look at them. So I use it on my uh, kitchen counters, a stainless steel sink. We use it in the bathroom, on the tile floors, um, on the walls, wherever we need it. I use it outside on the patio furniture. I will also use it on my windows. Um, in different dilutions um, or on glass top uh, tables. So a lot of different uses for it. The more, um, the more grimy the dirt, 
the more concentrated the solution you might consider. So like when, when I'm cleaning um, my patio furniture and there's a lot of mold, because again, I live here in South Florida and mold is something that grows fairly easily here. So I use a, a more concentrated solution of the Thieves Cleaner to Water. And I want to thank Razy Gitler, who is a member of our community. She shared some do-it-yourself recipes. And this is a household cleaner recipe that she offered. And th this is very cool. So if you want to do it yourself, the recipe is 20 drops of tea tree oil, which is also Melaleuca um, uh, alternifolia. Um, 20 drops of the Thieves essential oil blend, a quarter cup of distilled white vinegar, one and a quarter cups distilled water. You add the oils to a glass spray bottle and then add your vinegar and water and then spray any of your touch surfaces that you would like to and wipe it clean. You can use that uh, mixture for floors, grout, counters, and general household cleaning. All right, and lemon oil that they also mentioned in that uh, little article, lemon oil uh, is by itself removes crayon and permanent markers from the walls, but they recommend that you test a surface because it can strip paint. Lemon oil is actually really good in, in, in to replace uh, products like Goo Gone, um, to take sticky, um, the adhesive off of sticky labels that are left on products when you wanna take them off. Though that's really wonderful. I generally just put a couple of drops on a paper towel and then just use um, as much friction as you can on the surface and eventually it comes off. It, it works really well. It's very lovely. All right, hand soaps. You know those um, alcohol-based, toxic, um, water, waterless uh, hand purifiers, or any of your soaps or shampoos, any of that stuff, take a look at your ingredients. There are ingredients in there that more likely than not, you don't want on your body. Because this skin is not watertight. It may feel like it is, but it will absorb pretty much anything into it. Okay? So things like um, sodium lauryl sulfate, um, your parabens, they're all horribly toxic to our bodies. And so all of our products with Young Living are absent any toxins, which I'm always very grateful about. So, so we have a waterless hand pur purifier, <coughs> excuse me, Thieves waterless hand pu purifier. I like the, oops, excuse me just a second. <coughs> Goodness me. <coughs> A little tickle. <coughs> Give me just a sec. Okay, goodness, so sorry. <clears throat> we had really cold and windy weather today, so it's very dry. All right, um, not used to it. <clears throat> All right, we also have, my favorites are the Thieves and the Lavender Foaming Hand Soaps. Um, I use the Thieves Foaming Hand Soaps in my kitchen, and I use the lavender in my bathrooms. <clears throat> They're quite lovely. And Young Living has several different bar soaps. Um, lavender rosewood moisturizing soap, lemon sandalwood, cleansing soap, melaleuca geranium moisturizing soap, and others. So these are all wonderful, healthy alternatives to what you might buy in your grocery store, or even you wanna look at your ingredients in your health food store also. Not everything in the health food store is toxic, but you want to be a label reader because when when you, which is what I started doing 20 years ago, that's actually why I was so excited about becoming a member of Young Living. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, because I really wanted to detox my home. So I started with a bottle of lavender 
And um, one of the things that I wanted to share is is uh, bathroom deodorizers. You know, the spray the spray bottles, right? Or any room deodorizer. So <clears throat> to replace that, you can use a diffuser with any essential oil of your choice. For the kitchen, for cooking odors, you can use purification oil on the diffuser or in a glass spray bottle with some water. Um, or you can use, I use either lavender or I use, I actually like rose oil. And what I do is I put one drop in a two ounce spray, glass spray bottle. And when it starts getting down to the bottom, I just add more water. I don't add more oil right away because the rose oil is very potent. Less is more. Remember I shared that, right? Okay. Um, all right, so there are several different kinds of air fresheners that you can use, and you can put any oil that you like in a spray bottle or put it on the diffuser. Um, you want to take a look at your personal care products. We're not going to go into them tonight with any great detail, but shampoos, cream rinses, bath salts, we have so many wonderful products that you can use for your personal care. Um, skin care from uh, cleansers, face cleansers, moisturizers, body moisturizers, um, our Savvy Makeup line. We have a whole line of toothpaste, dental floss, and Thieves Fresh Essence mouthwash. That's actually what I have in this little glass spray bottle that I found on Amazon. And they were very inexpensive. Um, but it's really wonderful. I use the Fresh Essence Thieves mouthwash. And what I do is when I'm a, around a lot of people, I'll use it either as a breath freshener or I'll use it to keep boosting my immune system when I'm around a lot of people <clears throat> because the Thieves blend is very nurturing and supportive of our immune system, especially when we are in the presence of a lot of um a large volume of flu and upper respiratory bacteria, bugs that this time of year seem to be rampant, right? And I also have a, um, you'll see on the Young Living website, it's an, um, a USB orb diffuser. I didn't bring anything to show you tonight, I'm sorry. But it looks like a little egg, it's white, and um, it plugs into a USB um, outlet adapter or into your computer. And you can put tap water in it, and it has a little cotton wick in it that will uh, kind of um, draw up the essential oil and the water, and it has two settings. So it will give intermittent puffs of um, ultrasonic mist or a continuous mist, and they're wonderful. I actually have started putting it in my car with me because it's so little and lightweight, you can take it anywhere. I took it to the hotel with me last weekend because I was speaking at a conference last uh, last weekend, um, the manifestation uh, or manifesting event that was uh, put on by Tasha Chen and Diane Shields Betancourt. I was a speaker, I was so grateful to be able to, to do that um, and to serve that community, uh, talking about conscious heart connection. If you're interested in any information about that, if you are looking to expand your business, whether it's your Young Living business or some other business, go to the scienceofgettingrichacademy.com. You'll find some really valuable information there. And they are just starting their coaching program for the year, beginning in February. So take a look and see if it resonates with you. All right. So we also have Thieves Wipes. You know how you have some people like to carry wipes to use their hands when they're out. Thieves Wipes are very wonderful. Um, dish soap, your Thieves dish soap is wonderful. And if you don't like the Thieves dish soap or you want to just do something other than Young Living, just know that there are wonderful, like second, seventh generation products are really good also so that you can have a toxin-free hand dishwashing product. And you want to do a great veggie soap. So you can either use lemon oil in water and dunk or soak your fruits and vegetables in it. I love it for things like grapes, you know, because then you can get the veggie wash onto um, the, the little nooks and crannies of your grapes, right? 
Um, but Young Living does have a fruit and veggie soak and a fruit and veggie spray that you can take with you when you're out and about. And here and, and there, and the do-it-yourself would be the lemon oil in either a stainless steel or a glass or a ceramic bowl. You don't want to use that in plastic. Again, essential oils tend to leach plastic, and we don't want to eat plastic. All right, room deodorizers we talked about. I have a do-it-yourself recipe that Razy shared with us. So you can use five drops of lime essential oil, three drops of peppermint essential oil in a two ounce glass spray bottle. You pour water into the bottle, add your oils, shake it well, and spray in your bathrooms or wherever you want to. Underarm deodorants. You know, again, we're putting things on our body, we're breathing it, we are eating, right? So we want to cover all three ways that we can be um, affected by different toxins. All right, um, so underarm deodorants, um, we have AromaGuard Meadow Mist or Mountain Mint Deodorant. Um, these are uh, kind of, um, they're not roll-ons, they're bars, you know, where you, it's like a solid bar. Um, my favorite, though, is geranium oil with liquid crystal. Liquid crystal I buy at the health food store, and it's basically a quartz crystal in a liquid form, and I use a drop or two of geranium oil in my hand. I put a couple of sprays of the liquid crystal, rub my hands together, and gently apply to my underarms. I started using this as a deodorant because I couldn't find one that I loved the smell of or that really worked well for me. And when I was um, perimenopausal a few years ago, I was using um, geranium and clary sage to promote balance in my hormone system as I was going through that um, uh, change in how my body was, was functioning in the endocrine system. And I found that just using the geranium oil and the liquid crystal really worked well for me, and I just never stopped using it. And I would also apply the geranium and the clary sage to my belly, and that really helped to balance out my endocrine system, which was really nice. All right, let's talk about carpet fresheners, all right? And I know we're at seven, a little after 7.30, so I will move quickly. Um, carpet freshener, uh, a do-it-yourself um, uh, mixture. If you take a cup of baking soda and 15 drops of actually any essential oil or blend that, that you like the smell of, you put it in a glass container with the baking soda, shake it up. You can let it sit for a bit, maybe let it sit overnight, and then just shake it onto the carpet wherever you want it, let it sit for about 15 minutes or overnight if you can, and then just vacuum it up. Yeah, it's it works really beautifully. I actually used to do that when, um, I, when my dog Angel was with me because a lot of my home is carpeted, and she got fleas one year, and I didn't want to use anything toxic, so I got um, a glass mason jar, and I filled it with some baking soda, and I put lemongrass oil in it because that was in the essential oils desk reference and was a great flea repellent. And so I used that, um, got the dog out of the house for a little while because I didn't want it all on her paws, and vacuumed it, vacuumed it up really well. It worked like a charm. It was amazing. All right, so that's uh, carpet fresheners and flea repellent. All right, insect repellents. We actually have an insect repellent product that's really wonderful for mosquitoes. You can just apply it to the skin. It's gentle for um, children or adults. I've used it. It's wonderful. And before we had that, I would put in um, a two-ounce spray bottle, or actually a four-ounce is what I did, um, several drops of the purification oil blend because it has the citronella in it. It's a great mosquito repellent. You're only limited by the surface you didn't spray. <laughs> I have found that out the hard way. <laughs> and you want to reapply it if you're going to be getting really sweaty or you get wet, like if you're at a pool, you want to definitely reapply it um, so that it will continue working for you. All right, and one of the remedies that Razy found for us, a do-it-yourself for ants. 
Um, you can either try the insect repellent that Young Living sells, uh, already prepared, that has its, and I'll tell you what the active ingredients are in our insect repellent. <clears throat> you can see it on the youngliving.com website, but it's uh, sesame oil, citronella oil, lemongrass oil, rosemary oil, geranium, and spearmint oil, thyme, and clove oil, and then the non-active ingredient is vitamin E. Um, and, and so the do-it-yourself a remedy is 10 drops of peppermint oil, 10 drops of thieves essential oil, and 7 drops of lemon. Hello, Miss Carol. Welcome. All right. And, and what I read about the lemon, which I thought was interesting, it helps to mask the scent trails for the ants. And the D-limonene, which is in, which is one of the chemicals, uh, chemical, one of the chemical constituents of lemon essential oil is toxic to ants. So having that in this do-it-yourself blend, it, um, that's why it's effective. Um, you add a teaspoon of alcohol-free unscented witch hazel and rubbing alcohol or vodka and distilled water. And they say to mix the three essential oils, the peppermint, the thieves, and the lemon oil, add the witch hazel into a spray bottle, fill the remainder of the bottle with equal parts of water and alcohol. They invite you to gently roll between your hands to mix the, the, all the ingredients up before each use and spray it directly on an ant trail and the point of entry. And a variation was to add 10 drops of cinnamon bark or tea tree oils in addition to the peppermint thieves and the lemon oil. I thought that was a, a great recipe, and I'm so grateful. I know Razie was unable to join us tonight, but I want to give her credit for sharing these wonderful do-it-yourself recipes. And I wanted to share with you for, remember we talked about fleas a little bit ago. Um, you want to use, there are sometimes, some of the uh, essential oils that you can use for fleas are different for cats and dogs. Um, and, and so they were talking about some of the oils that you can use for dogs that you, and I'll tell you which ones are additional ones for cats. Um, and again, you'd use it with baking soda in a glass container. So for dogs, you can add thieves or purification. Repel Aroma is actually a blend that Young Living sells that has citronella, Idaho tansy, Palo Santo, and tea tree essential oils in it. And what I like about this is that a portion of all proceeds from all of the Animal Sense products, including the Repel Aroma, are, are uh, are shared to support Vital Ground, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting the habitat of grizzly bears and other wild roaming wildlife. I love how Young Living um, does so much to support so much in nature and different nonprofit organizations. We have a fabulous foundation that I'm so proud to be a part of and contribute to. And Young Living, all proceeds that are donated to the foundation are used for support of different projects that the foundation funds. None of, none of our donations are used for administrative expenses. Young Living absorbs all of them. I, I find that to be so incredibly wonderful. All right, so for dogs, thieves, purification, repel aroma, longevity, paragize, or the single oils of citronella, lemongrass, black pepper, tea tree, rosemary, clove, oregano, cinnamon bark, or peppermint. These are all oils that you can use with baking soda as a flea repellent. You can also, the way that the aroma repel was uh, directed to use, you can actually put a couple of drops on your hand and actually pat it on your animal's coat, on their fur, and help with um, uh, flea repellent uh, uh, benefits that way. I used to use the lemongrass. I would put it on my hands, and I would wipe my dog's um, hindquarter down and her tail. She was a Sheltie, so she had a lot of fur, and that's where they tended to hang out. And I would put a couple of drops on her collar also. Worked like a charm. It was wonderful. 
Now the cats are a little bit different. Some of them are the same. Um, the purification is the same. Immupower is a different one. Repel Aroma is the same. Helichrysum was a different one. Patchouli is different. Citronella and tea tree were the same as for dogs. Palo Santo was a different one. Um, Eucalyptus radiata, spearmint, and dorado azul were different. And then the same as for dogs, peppermint, lemongrass, black of pepper, and oregano. All right. And okay, so that that covers that. So that kind of covers our our different ways of looking at eliminating toxic products in the home and some of the Young Living essential oils and blends and essential oil infused products that you can consider to use as an alternative. Plus we shared some do-it-yourself recipes if that was something that you enjoyed doing. Does anybody have any questions about anything that we talked about or do you have any questions about how you can create a toxin-free home or office for yourselves? We'll give you a moment to type in under the comments and see if there's anything that you would like me to address. Give you a moment. I guess I've done well, and I have shared everything that I needed to, right? Well, let's see, I'll we'll give you just another moment or two. And if questions come to mind, by all means, just type them in the comments after the, the Facebook Live video posts, which is pretty much almost immediately after our broadcast is complete. Um, I, I will make it available to everybody. So if, if questions come up that you didn't think about right now or if you wanted to watch the video again and take notes and because I know I talk pretty quickly. If other questions come up, by all means, please feel free to type them in. I'll get a notification and I'll respond to your questions as quickly as I can. And do feel free to share this with your friends and family. Um, invite them to our group. You, um, you'll see um, the link at the top of your page. You can share that link with anyone. Um, we are always welcoming people that are part of Young Living or any other company that are just looking for information and education about essential oils. All right. There are no questions. So I am going to wish you all a blessed rest of your evening. Thank you so much for joining me, those of you that are live with me tonight and those of you that listen to the recording. I'm very grateful. We'll be back here again probably in two weeks on Tuesday night, and that time will be at, um, I think it's 8 or 8.30 in the morning. Keep an eye out for us, and if you have any questions at all about anything related to essential oils, please post your questions in our Facebook group. I'm always happy to share. Or if you have do-it-yourself recipes or different things that you have found work for you, please do share with us. We love to have people share as much as I love to share. And if you would like to make a purchase for any of these products um, that you've heard about tonight during this broadcast, please first, if you're a Young Living distributor, all you have to do is go into your virtual office and place your order. If you are new to Young Living and someone invited you to this uh, broadcast, please go have a chat with them and ask them how you can make your purchase. If I invited you or you found your way here and you don't have someone that really introduced you to Young Living, please feel free to go to my website at Eileen, I-L-E-N-E Gottlieb, G-O-T-T-L-I-E-B dot com or send me a Facebook message or send me a message here on the Facebook group, Sharing the Love with Young Living Essential Oils. Thanks so much for joining me and have a wonderful rest of your night. Blessings. Bye.